Hello, witches. <laughs> I wanted to talk to you today about um, Eris and how she's connected to the Venus retrograde and how she's connected to the nodes now being in Libra and um, and Aries. And um, it's an aspect today. I am recording this on a, on August the 4th, Friday, Venus Day. So hail Venus as always. And, um, and it's things that I've been noticing since Venus stationed retrograde on the feast day of the Magdalene, July the 22nd. And with the release of the Barbie movie and with the release of uh, Taylor Swift's um, um, new albums, she's re-recording her six albums, but also she's on tour. I don't know when the tour started. I'm not really a Swifty, although I might be rapidly becoming one. <laughs> uh, and I'll tell you why. But she calls it the Eras Tour. And I always think that these, um, the, these names are often quite iconic for what's happening now. Because I really believe that this Venus retrograde is helping us to really move into a new era or paradigm or age okay and um it's connected with the venus retrograde in leo uh that uh the first one for many many years be, um, was in 1987 but that retrograde began in virgo met in the middle at in leo and ended in Leo. And the, all the retrogrades that have been in Leo since have been partly in Virgo and partly in Leo. But anyway, let's move on to Eris, because I'm so fired up today. And I think we are really in a smash the patriarchy kind of moment. So I want to show you, um, and I've put the link for these below. I am not an affiliate. I do not get any money for the sales of these. Um, I will anyway share the link because of some uh, things that have come up really since Venus turned retrograde. I bought myself these and on the day that Venus is in aspect to Eris. So this is the Spark Company. They're in UK. Their T-shirts are effing amazing. So I treated myself to I am effing radiant and petrify the patriarchy with Medusa on it. How awesome are those t-shirts? And I'll explain why. <laughs> so let's look at the astrology first. No, actually, let's look at cards first of all. For this time, I was um, uh, pulled to uh, look at the Divine Feminine Oracle deck, uh, which is uh, by Megan Watterson, who amongst other books, wrote a book about Mary Magdalene that I, I have listened to a couple of times. And the artist is my favourite artist who did this um, this calendar and this wonderful picture of Hecate. And her name is Lisbeth Cheva Gesserman. And she um, goes by She Who Is on Facebook. I think she's on Instagram too. And on Etsy, that's where you can buy her stuff. But anyway, the cards. Well, you know, I sorted through because I was looking for a particular card and two other cards jumped out. So I'll share those first, but I'm not going to read about them. The first one was Bridget. And she is she of the red hair and the goddess of the eternal flame. And we are so fired up right now. Well, I am. <laughs> and I'll talk about that in a minute. And her message is I am an eternal flame and each day my light grows brighter. Of course, she was an Irish goddess. And then a Kali. <laughs> and I don't know if any of you have seen the image of uh, Barbie Kali going around. I should find that for you and maybe put that as um, the cover photo for this podcast episode. And most people know who Kali is, but she's the mother of the universe. And she says, I release all that doesn't serve me at time. It's time to be the truth of who I am. And then this Sekhmet, okay, the lion goddess. Really, this is the epitome of Venus retrograde in Leo. Um, in my class, we're actually kind of talking about a whole load of these things. 
But this is, I am pure strength. I honor my anger by giving voice to it. And she is the red lady. Now, let me read the book. Who is she? Who she is? Sekhmet represents the sacred rage that keeps us protected and reminds the world of the pure strength of female power. Sekhmet is an Egyptian warrior goddess depicted with the head of a lioness and the body of a woman. The lion was considered the fiercest, fierce, fiercest hunter in Egypt and a sign of protection. She is the daughter of the sun god Ra. And this is very relevant for when we look at the astrology because Leo is the home of the sun. Um, and the red solar disc that she wears indicates that she is a solar deity. All right. We had many solar deities that were feminine, all right, or female or women, whatever you want to call it. Um, she is known as the powerful one, the red lady, she who mauls, and the one before whom evil trembles. The ancient Egyptians held rituals at the end of the war and at the beginning of each new year to tame the wrath of Sekhmet. They would play music, drink beer that was dyed with pomegranate juice and dress all of the Sekhmet statues in red. It was believed that the inebri inebriation would lull the goddess into a stupor and end her destruction. Sekhmet was a powerful guardian and protector of the pharaoh. She was called on during times of war and considered to be a goddess of divine retribution. So when we uh, choose this card, this is holy rage, sacred anger and positive aggression. These states of being are crucial aspects of the divine feminine. It's the female power that ends wars, that brings home miss, uh, missing children, that seeks justice for the earth and for those who can't defend themselves. The brilliant artist and mystic William Blake relates that the voice of honest indignation is the voice of God. And I'm going to say that's in all of us, by the way. This is not just about women. The feminine has for too long been disassociated from rage and anger. Calm down. You're being too confrontational. <laughs> If we can't embody the fiery emotion of anger, it often festers or expresses itself in subver subversive, manipulative ways, or it leaves us anxious and frustrated. Positive aggression, acting with love on behalf of what breaks our heart or enrages us, is what allows us to become agents of change to better our lives and the world around us. Sekhmet wants us to come face to face with our true strength. Power doesn't come from passive aggressive behaviors. We don't have to fear expressing our anger directly to an institution or a person who is acting unjustly. Sekhmet wants us to see that anger is an essential emotion and Sekhmet is this sacred call to move that anger from pure emotion into conscious action. She wants us to act with conviction and from love. She wants us to create the healthy boundaries we need so we aren't injured again and again or so that we can free ourselves from a destructive pattern, it's time to end. We have a divine right to draw a sacred circle around us at all times. The protection we invoke for ourselves and others helps move us from feeling helpless to taking loving action. What's that got to do with the astrology, you say? <laughs> so Venus in Leo is really about the loving action in many ways. Okay, so Venus turned retrograde, as I mentioned, on uh, July the 22nd. So it's now August the 5th on Venus Day as I uh, record. Well, actually, it's eight, August the 4th today. Uh, but this aspect will happen on the 5th on the East Coast. It will happen still on the 4th for me. 
and I'm going to draw lines so you can be really clear where I am here on the chart. Venus is here, 25 Leo. <clears throat> and today she is in this trine to Eris. Now, Eris is the table shaker. She is the revealer of unfairness and artifice. She um, has been said to be hate and Sekhmet, Sekhmet was portrayed as hate by um, the patriarchy because female anger is not allowed, right? But this is righteous anger. Eris represents being left out and she represents those who are left out and those who are sidelined and those that are put down and those that are called you know, not enough or ugly, or um, in this case, for me, what's brought it up over the last couple of days and why I'm really feeling this aspect today is Taylor Swift. Uh, you know, I'm not even a Swifty, but because she's out on tour again and very much in the public eye again, um, and um, also has just re-released her six albums herself to gain control of her own music, from a contract she signed when she was 14, she is attracting an awful lot of misogynist hate, to be quite honest. I've seen her described as just a girl singer while well, she writes her own songs. You know, I've been I've seen her described as, oh, just a privileged kind of white girl, and she's privileged and she's white, but she does use her profile for good um, you may not love her music. I don't care. You know, it's not necessarily my cup of tea. It's not something I listen to all day. But as a person, she is iconic. She has been described as an icon for a real iconic millennial. And she is. She's a leader. She thinks, she writes, she talks, she gives her experience. She's very vulnerable. I'm not going to look at her astrology. There's no need. She's an archetype. And there's no, no accident that all the hate against her is um, coming out during this Venus retrograde. Barbie, too. Oh, my goodness. Could people lose their shit enough about a movie? I'm sorry. Barbie is a really great movie. You know, no movie is perfect, but it really kind of subverts the patriarchy to take on the patriarchy and to show that the patriarchy harms us all. Really, that's the core of the message. And it just uses the iconic kind of divine feminine um, so-called perfection of femalehood, Barbie, to subvert it. I mean, I mean, that's pretty clever, really. Again, I don't care whether you love the movie or not. Archetypally, this is really what's showing up. It's rattling people's cages. Taylor Swift is rattling people's cages. This Venus retrograde is rattling people's cages. So I want to talk a little bit more about Eris and what where we're going with all of this. So Venus trined Eris for the first time before she was retrograde. Um, on July the 8th. And at that point, uh, Venus was at 25 degrees. She's now back at 25 degrees. Eris moves very slowly. So she was at 25 degrees. And um, both of them were moving forward and direct. Venus at that point had nearly caught up to Mars and then, um, which is the divine masculine in many ways within all of us but it's also about action. And, and then kind of that by that point, they were less than four degrees apart. I think they got as close as about three degrees, 30, and then they moved apart again. Venus started to slow down. But this trying to um, Venus and Eris kind of started setting the scenes. There are other aspects too, and I'll probably do separate podcasts for those Okay. 25 as well. Venus is aspecting Eris at 25 degrees and we're in a seven year and seven has kind of a tower card kind of energy. Things have to be pulled down before they can be built up. And so we're 
in the sevens at this point with Eris. Then we move to today and Venus squares, um, sorry, trines Eris again, as I showed you. So Eris is here at 25 degrees still, and Venus is back to the 25 degree mark. So if we go back to that July mark, it was 25 degrees and 14 minutes. And guess what? We're at 25 degrees and 14 minutes again. 25, the seven, seven year, the tower card number, 14 minutes change. But what's even more funny or relevant is that by this time, they are both retrograde. Venus and Eris turned retrograde within a couple of days of each other. OK, so we have that, too. So, wow, there's a real kind of message there. And this is fire. This is these fire goddesses. This is righteous anger as well. Now, there will be one more exact Venus trine Eris, and I'll show you that this now and see where this is going. This one is um, uh, on October the 2nd. Venus will station direct on September the 3rd at 12 degrees Leo. And then she will move all the way back through Leo and go to 24 degrees, almost 25 degrees. But this is a two and a four. This is two is the divine feminine. Four is a number of stability, but it's also a six, six, which is a very feminine, very creative divine mother kind of um, birthing kind of energy. Again, there's lots of um, there's lots of other aspects tied into this, but I thought this one was too important not to kind of hone in on. But six is about um, responsibility and service, which needs to be achieved through love, nurturing and protection. It's the idealist, the seeker and very tolerant, but and very cheerful and very loving and energetic. It's it's uh, the six is also said to be free of compulsive attachments to money and success. It's about doing things for the joy and the love of it in Leo, especially. And that's one of the core messages of this Venus retrograde that we've been going through. But what, what else is also happening at this time when Venus in Leo, again, here she is at the top, is trying Eris. By the t this is, means that things are moving ahead again. We've been through, um, for Venus anyway, and Venus being a personal planet and the one that retrogrades for the least time of all, um, is, is moving ahead and really starting to work on the lessons. Eris, uh, you know, much slower mover. She's still retrograde, but that's OK. But uh, by this time in October, we're heading into eclipse season. And eclipses are always new and full moons that occur um, close to the lunar nodes. And if you have been paying attention between that first Venus Eris connection and the second one, the nodes also shifted back actually around the same time that Venus and Eris turned retrograde. This was such a concentrated period the nodes moved back into Aries and Libra. The south node is now in Libra and the north node is now in Aries. So briefly put, the Libra Aries is, uh, the Libra south node is about um, kind of leaving behind some of that tendency to uh be the peacekeeper, to have debilitating niceness for keeping the peace for the sake of it, for not expressing our uh, righteous anger, which is very Eris. <laughs> and look at this lineup. I'll show you on here for this. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to draw more lines here. So the South Node, release that debilitating niceness. And this is going to apply very much for kind of fighting the patriarchy, which is the Barbie movie, which is Taylor Swift. They all speak out against um, 
the patriarchal conditioning um, of the treatment of others by the hierarchical systems and structures of our society. And yes, a lot of men that represent that. So it's the divine masculine. And no, not all men are like that. Some men are very enlightened and don't feel threatened at all by the rise of women, because we are moving into a time of solar union, the divine male and the divine female or the divine masculine and feminine, sorry, um, uh, or the, I should say it the other way around, really, the divine feminine and masculine are the core. It's yin yang. It's come together. It's night and day. It's the divine marriage of all opposites, the heros gamos, whatever you want to call it. It this is union, and oh, I'll talk about it here. So the south node is conjunct Mars on the day of this third and final trine between Mars and Eris. And Mars is action, will, drive, ruler of Aries, the North Node, um, and saying this is a, a real message to kind of cut into that debilitating niceness and don't play nice anymore. It's time to stand up for yourself, for others, and express that righteous anger in healthy ways i'm not talking about going and attacking people uh, you know the trouble with all of this is and i'll come to the north node in a minute but the north node can also be too much so it can cause many to really lash out so i encourage you to kind of look at somebody like taylor swift look at somebody like greta gerwig who um is the director of barbie and how cleverly they are taking on the patriarchy and expressing this righteous anger about unfairness uh, without attacking and being brutal and violent. And there's no need for that. So hopefully we can all stay in our highest selves to do this. Also conjunct the South Node is this um, asteroid here. This is asteroid Lilith. I talk, I call her the talk to the hand Lilith. It's time to say talk to the hand. I've, you know, this has come up for me over the last couple of days. I posted a thing about Taylor Swift that triggered some men. And oh my goodness, they came on and they, oh, and, and they really wanted to say what they thought. And I can't be sexist. I like this woman singer and I can't be sexist. I like that woman singer but they were dissing on this woman, Taylor Swift. And, you know, I don't care what people think of her music. They were being quite sexist, to be quite honest, with the way they dissed on her. If you just say, well, her music's not for me, but I can see why she's an icon and people love her, or something like that, or duct tape, don't say anything. But this is a message for the divine masculine in all of us. Know when to be quiet. OK, <laughs> there are other examples I could give, but I won't. But anyway, asteroid Lilith up there, the talk to the hand is saying it's time to say talk to the hand. I've had enough. OK, cut it out. Then we get to the north node <laughs> and look at this. The north node and Eris of four minutes from an exact conjunction. Could that say, express that, stand up for yourselves, express that divine rage, express, express that strength, honor your anger by giving voice to it, channel your inner segment. Could it say that any more loudly? And part of this journey for me, I warn you now, <laughs> is that I am an activist and I am a feminist and I will stand up for women and um, the marginalized however I can, sometimes imperfectly, but I'm, I'm going to do it more through my work as well because it's time to stand up and voice and express that anger, that, oh, anyway come to the strength part of Sekhmet. 
as they as these two oppose Venus trines Eris, and Venus is here in Leo, and and she is conjunct Hecate, who is the triple moon goddess with the keys to the gates of heaven, hell, and earth, all the kingdoms, the shamanic realms, um, uh, the crossroads as well. Uh, you know, she was said to um, haunt um, doorways at night, showing people the direction. She has a kind of psychopomp energy as well, which is kind of taking us down into the shadows and exploring those deeper kind of more human strengths. She helped Demeter find her daughter Persephone in the story of loss and return and rebirth. So here we have Hecate, triple moon, powerful goddess. And then we have Juno conjunct Venus. And Juno was the wife of Zeus, as usual, portrayed as a victim of the hound dog Zeus. But I see her as a very strong woman. She was queen of the gods and she kind of let the hound dog do his own thing. Thought she he doesn't affect my strength. I am just going to be the goddess of women, children, marginalized people. But I also represent that sacred union. But more importantly, that sacred union of all interconnectedness, all opposites coming together in the heart. And this is all fire and air. This is really like trying to fan your flames, time to speak up, time to um, take a stand and stop playing nice. We can see what's happening in the world, you know, without getting overly political, but we can see what's happening to uh, the rights of women and LGBTQ people and so on and so forth. And we're also afraid of constant confrontation. We're also afraid of standing up and finding our voice. So thinking about <laughs> the voice while we're here also, and, you know, I do kind of want to um, highlight these degrees here, 24 degrees, 24, 23, 21, 23, 24. I've, I talked about the 23 uh, being the most human number over and over, but but ignore that for now. Also, around the same degrees, 25 degrees, talking of voice, we have Mercury. Now, um, Mercury goes retrograde on, um, on what date? Oh, I can't remember. Let me just get my notes up because I'm so full of like, this is amazing stuff here. And, uh, you know, I I work quite intuitively sometimes. And so I was compelled to do this, um, this video to encourage you and inspire you and fire you up to take a stand in whatever way in your own life for the marginalized um, and so on and so forth. Anyway, Mercury stationed or stations retrograde on August the 23rd at 21 Virgo. So, you know, Virgo, 21 degrees, close to these degrees again. And Mercury um, is at home in the sign of Virgo. But Mercury will go retrograde until September the 15th at 8 Virgo. Um, and then we'll track, he's going back forward, having learned the lessons of the retrograde in Virgo. And Virgo is very much kind of the priestess, it's the Mary's, if you look at that, an M, it's a, a, a sign of service and being useful and having meaning. Um, and it's true humility, not being overly humble and doffing your cap kind of humility. It's being humble and knowing that you have to take a stand and be useful and have meaning and speak out for that. Well, look at this, all at these same degrees, Mercury is almost exactly opposing Neptune as Venus trines Eris. This is an astounding lineup um, coming up and it's starting, it's activated now as Venus trines Eris together. Okay, now somebody asked me about what does it mean that Mercury and Venus are 
um, going retrograde together. And I said, I don't know. She said, all my colleagues at work want me to ask you and want want, want you to kind of go take all your time to kind of uh, tell us what it is. And I'm like, I do not have um, um, I do not have, you know, the time to do it for just one person. So here I am talking about it. What it means is that Venus and Mercury uh, are the most personal planets. They are the planets closest to the sun, between Earth and the sun. And when they're retrograde, both Mercury and Venus are closest to Earth. So it means we're really getting a um, a big message about reviewing and reflecting on our most personal energies of values, relationships, and our voice, and how we express all of that. That's it, kind of in a nutshell. I know people fear retrogrades, but they're not to fear. And this one is really at its crux, uh, or the fact that all this is happening together is asking us to really get in touch with our heart's desire, our true values, and to let our light shine on the earth on in, um, in major ways in Venus, uh, with Venus in Leo, sorry, and to allow that sense of solar union of the divine masculine and feminine to shine. Mercury in Virgo to reflect upon how we do that to be of use in the world. Okay. And, and then to stand up against uh, that debilitating good people on both sides. Let's play nice. Let's not kind of have powerful conversations and speak and stand up. All of that's coming together. Mercury is opposite Neptune, as I said, and that's in Neptune in Pisces. This is about speaking, for want of a better word, um, the words of um, the divine source, interconnectedness, the collective unconsciousness, and bringing it down to earth in very useful, practical ways. So in a nutshell, this is what we have coming up. It's kind of activated today, which is August the 4th, as I uh, record this. Um, you know, there's a lot more I could say, but this is a really concentrated point um, coming up on October the 2nd. And what we're feeling today and what we're feeling coming up now in the Venus retrograde with the trying to Eris and then with the Mercury retrograde joining in, Mercury turns retrograde again um, on August the 23rd as Venus is starting to rise out of her um, uh, metamorphic underworld where she meets the sun in the middle. Venus is rising as warrior Venus, morning star Venus too, right? <laughs> She sounds very Sekhmet there, and, and she is. Uh, Morning Star Venus, um, especially in Leo, is going to be pretty sekhmet <laughs> So go and read all about Sekhmet, learn more about her as well. Um, but also um, Mercury is, uh, you know, turning direct then just 12 days after Venus turns direct, um, and both are rising as morning stars. It's time to speak out time to take a stand in whatever way that means for you but doing it in that very straight up down I am kind of way all right so I hope you feel inspired to do it um and uh you know follow me on my sub stack for my daily posts I'll talk more about it but boy is this powerful energy and uh you know I think I think just to look at feminism for women with Barbie and Taylor Swift, women have had enough, <laughs> but also this reflects out onto all marginalized people. So this reflects onto people of color. This reflects onto the LBGTQ plus community. And it's time to take a stand and actually for all those communities to be more um, together. 
because if um if your um activism isn't intersexual inter intersexual intersectional then really um you know why are you treading on somebody else who's as marginalized as you i don't get it so um, if you don't like that you know you can um if you resonate with my message then super super give me a thumbs up much love to you from a very fired up louise <laughs> on august the 4th venus day um feeling eris and venus because the aspect bits in my chart so yay <laughs> love you guys see you next time